Do you follow all this madness yesterday on Twitter? Of course I did. You did? Brian. Yeah, our main man, Jinder. He cannot be hindered, brother. He sounds like he got hindered yesterday. A little bit. No? All right, so uh, here's the story. And this this whole thing is just, I don't know what's going on. So uh, Tony Khan, from the front page of WrestlingObserver.com, made his thoughts known publicly about Jinder receiving a WWE World Heavyweight title match against Seth Rollins on next week's Raw. He took two acts to air some frustrations about what he called a double standard for the reaction or lack thereof. So what he tweeted was a double standard. Hook, 28-1 career record on winning streak, calls out champ, a logical challenge, sparks online outrage. Jinder has literally lost every single match he's in for the past year, immediately gets title shot, where is the rage? Okay, listen. I saw a lot of people defending Tony. They're doing it on the uh, on the chat right now. And yes, DJ, he is wrong. Okay? What timeline is he on? Who is complaining about Hook getting a shot against Samoa Joe? Who? <laughs> yeah, I didn't see have, that Have one, you but... seen anybody complaining that Hook is getting a shot at Samoa Joe? I haven't. I haven't seen one person complaining about that. Okay? I haven't been searching it out, but no, I did, I did okay. not see anyone complain. Then he says, Jinder is a getting a title shot. Where is the rage? What? What? All I have been hearing about since Monday is Jinder Mahal is getting a title shot? Now listen, maybe this is out there somewhere, but I haven't seen any of it. I have seen nobody complaining about Hook, and I've seen tons of people mocking the idea that Jinder Mahal is getting a title shot. So I saw that tweet, and I was like, what are you talking about? Where is this happening? So then Mahal tweeted, who the heck is Hook? And then I guess he deleted it later. And, uh, you know, there's a lot I could talk about here. Well, the USA Network also jumped in at some well, point. Well, yeah. Right? He he, uh, he called out USA Network, who took a perceived dig at Khan's public affinity for cage match by uh, tweeting, what was the cage match rating to a tweet about Rollins and Mahal having history in, N- in NXT? Or, uh, yeah, in NXT. Which is funny. That That's whatever. What was the cage match rating? He called the tweet a moral victory for USA. One more win than Mahal got in the last year. Adding, you really put AEW in our place getting Jinder Mahal in a big match on your TV show. Do it more often. Brian. Yes. Interestingly enough, on cage match, which I am on right now, the last time Jinder Mahal won a matchup was exactly one year to the day as he defeated Julius Creed at on NXT New Year's Evil on NXT. I got more yes. stats for you. Do you know when the last time he had a match in WWE was? The last time Jinder had a match on w- in WWE, not even on TV, just like Al's show. September. No. Last December against Bray Wyatt. That was oh, his last main roster match. Okay. Do you know the last time he won a match on the main roster was? 18 months ago. 18 months ago. He has not won a match on WWE television in 18 months, and he's getting a world title shot on Monday. And. Where is the outrage, Tony asked? You're looking at it. I'm outraged because last night at one point during NXT, Booker T says, man, I can't wait to see that matchup with Jinder Mahal, challenger for the title. He's looked great lately. (laughs) Well, I mean, when if you look at like, you know, astronomical time, if you look at how many, how, how long... Life has been on this planet. He's looked good lately. <laughs> but yes. But no, who is complaining about Hook getting a shot against Samoa Joe? 
You, you know can't, what? There's no you know way what? you watch AEW if you're complaining about that. There's I, no way. I like Tony, so I'm going to complain about it so he's got somebody to go after. How's Hook getting this title shot? The only guy he's even beaten recently is Yuta. Anybody can beat that guy. That shouldn't get you a title shot against Samoa Joe. Well, you know. There you go. And then, you know, people were complaining about, uh, well, you know, what about Abaddon? Ab- Abaddon actually got wins before she, uh, you know, got championship matches. I mean, she vanished forever and came back to win number one contenders matches, but she did win number one contenders matches before she got title shots. Not gender. But, you know, here's the thing. Yeah, I got a lot of tweets. Yes, it was the exact same thing as last time. Got a lot of tweets from people in AEW. They, they were like, why is he doing this on Twitter? This is embarrassing. That's what they said. They said it last time, too. I'm sure he's aware of it. But, you know, he sees this as, look at all the engagement I get for these tweets, and then I can tweet out some matches and some promotion for Wednesday and, you know, to help boost the rating. That's why he does it. There's also the WWE side. Here's the thing with Jinder. You think Jinder doesn't know who Hook is? He does, okay? He knows who Hook is. He knows who Taz is. You know, Taz, on, I think on one of Taz's radio shows a few years ago, he put over Jinder. And, uh, you know, I had, it was funny. It's like I had people yesterday that after this went down, they started defending Jinder. They were like, yeah, you know, he'll have a good match with the guy. He's a solid guy. He's not going to mess anything up or whatever. But WWE loves when their talent trolls Tony on Twitter. And so, uh, you know, everybody's just going back and forth. The point of all of this is, if you didn't like it, it's going to happen more. If you didn't like it, it's going to happen more. There's, uh, you know, Tony thinks there's a method to his madness. Other people don't see the method, but he has one. And uh, that's just the way it is. But I still have absolutely no idea who is not outraged about gender and who is outraged about hook i have seen zero of this maybe when there I, this is is this a dark twitter is there a dark twitter that i don't go on it's the deep holes of x the deep holes of x huh i after i read that exchange between all the parties i at home gave it a well deserved this is awesome chant You have nothing better to do with your life. Than troll? It is gender. And I think Bischoff said something stupid, too, but I'm not sure where it is here. I'll tell you what. Bischoff recommended I go to Michael's Steakhouse at the South Point in Las Vegas, and somebody else told me that yesterday, so I might trust this guy. Oh, and then we had Corey Graves tweeting gender rules, and then Dax tweeted hook rules, and then Bischoff tweeted a clown emoji or something. <laughs> How ironic. Eric Bischoff and a clown emoji. Oh well. I think I think Bischoff I think uh Tony got a reading as your friend in as well, if I recall correctly, on Eric Bischoff. <laughs> Cause one thing we think we can all agree on is that Eric Bischoff is an idiot. Right? Okay. Any other news? For me? <laughs> yeah. No, not really. Well, you said it was a big day. It was. I went over all of it. Well. I thought maybe I go. might spend more time on certain things, but it didn't happen. You don't think we're getting a big return tonight? I heard the report, the Young Bucks. Oh, really? In, Daly, in Daly's place. Well, you know, it is uh, It is uh, homecoming. Yeah. yeah. So I think the Young Bucks should be there. Isn't Eddie Kingston, didn't Eddie Kingston request some sort of challenger? I don't know. Wouldn't this be his chance to actually, I think, defeat the standing New Japan Strong defense record? Oh, really? How many times did you defend it? I believe 10. Well, how could he be at 10? Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, because he probably wrestled, he probably beat Rocky Romero six times. <laughs> wow. So. Yeah, I think that for a homecoming show, we should have some. Uh, you know, 2019, 2020 faces there. I don't know if we uh, will or not, but I guess we'll find out. Big Swole. <laughs> I don't know if we'll see Big the Swole there. It's possible, I guess. But I'm not sure about that one. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. You have a commute. 
Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.